Hello, welcome to Tabletop CP. Today we will be playing an entirely new game to us, a game called 7TV Apocalypse. So as I mentioned earlier, this is a new game to us. I've played uh, this will be my second actual game against an opponent, Andres as well, and I've also played about four solo games just to learn the rules. So this is not going to be a teaching game, and I'm not going to be teaching anyone the rules as I'm still learning them myself. It's more of a learning game for us and for anyone watching. So um, if you spot mistakes or anything like that, of course, let us know in the comments. We won't be going over all the rules in detail. Uh, as they come up during the game, we'll talk about them. But, uh, Basically, 7TV Apocalypse is a game. It's structured like a TV show. So the whole idea is narrative-based gameplay. You create your characters. They consist of stars, co-stars, and extras. And you write the script, and you play the game, and it gives you the rules on how to do that. Being an apocalypse theme, obviously there's going to be a lot of wastelands, mutants, um, shady characters running around. So the uh, game comes with tons of different character options, all the different stars, co-stars, and extras that you can think of to make any kind of game you want, from Mad Max to uh, fungoid plant invaders to aliens to your standard Walking Dead zombies to Fallout type games. Anything you can really imagine, uh, it's possible with the stuff that's included in the box. Our game will be set in a post-apocalyptic, post it's kind of a tough word to say, uh, world where there's been a nuclear war and it's sort of Mad Max themed. Uh, I've just made a custom mission uh, for this game. Uh, there are missions in the book and I've taken one of those and I've slightly modified it and I'm gonna run it as the mission which we're gonna be calling the pilot. Now I'll read the idea for the pilot. A local settlement called Tubertown has hired a well-known badass Tobias Quinn and his partner John Frederick to execute a raid on a nearby Marauder base to reacquire some provisions that were stolen from them. They've supplied a squad of their own security force to assist. Meanwhile, Captain Nightmare and his band of crazies wait in their desert stronghold for the inevitable counter-raid. The area the Marauder base is in is also a well-known rad scorpion habitat. Mission. The attacking force must recapture the supplies. The marauders must stop them. Attackers will deploy within a 10 inch square of their corner. Marauders will deploy within 10 inches of the hut on the hill. There are also five objectives scattered around the map. To capture the supplies, a model must be in base contact with them at the end of the game. So this is the marauder base here. This is, these are the supplies. So the marauders will be deploying 10 inches from this shed here on top of the hill. And the attacking force will be deploying in a 10 inch square over here in this corner. So there's objectives. There's one here. There's one here. There's one here. There's one here. And there's one here. So these are additional objectives just to gain extra uh, victory points. So at the end of the game you tally up all the different victory points you get from the various methods of obtaining them. And whoever has the most wins. So these five are just going to be worth one. The main objective is going to be worth three points. Um, so that's going to be the main source of victory points, but there's also victory points for things such as uh, killing uh, stars, co-stars, things like that. And the rad scorpions are going to be involved as well, and I'll talk about them now. Rad scorpions are known to be active in this area. Being drawn to noise and commotion is only a matter of time until one, one or more show up. When the second act starts, Roll to determine if a rad scorpion shows up. A roll of six is needed. Plus one to this roll every turn after. After the first rad scorpion appears and is killed, start the process over again. Rad scorpions will arrive at the center of a random table quarter. They will activate for free at the start of the turn and will move towards the nearest model to attack. The opposing player can use plot points to buff the scorpions and any side that kills the scorpion gains one victory point. So that is the basic setup for the episode, the pilot. Now we're gonna go ahead and take a look at uh, two uh, casts. So we'll start with the quote, good guys, as there's not really any good or bad, or it's a subjective term in the wasteland. We're just gonna call these guys for this game, the good guys. So uh, we'll just start up here. I'll just briefly go over what these are. So each, each cast has a one star and one co-star. I think you can have more co-stars. 
but you do have the one star. So he's your main character in the game. He's going to be the most powerful, the most expensive, and he's the one that the game centers around, basically. Co-star is going to be just a notch below him. And then you have extras. Your extras are exactly that, just extra models. A lot of times they're going to be cannon fodder or have a very specialized mission based on the extra that you bring. So looking up at the stars, so each uh, character has a card. There's a ton of cards, probably a three inch thick stack of cards to choose from in the game. So we'll just look at a card here. We'll look at uh, natural leader. So a lot of these are generic. For example, natural leader. He could be anything you can think of. Uh, maybe like uh, Patrick Swayze and Red Dawn or Rick Grimes from Walking Dead. Anything. A lot of them are very generic like this. Others are more specific like Alien Warlord or something. But they're big enough that you can use any backstory for any model you want pretty much. So our uh, star for the good guys is going to be Natural Leader. And I'm going to be using this guy. His name is Tobias Quinn. He is a renegade mercenary. Highly sought after by local settlements to perform jobs for them. So what we have is a bunch of stats. Uh, there's most of the, the games I've played, the only stats that have really come into play are defense, mind, and spirit. The other ones I haven't in, had any reason to uh, roll on them yet. Uh, so the leaders, well, or most of the leaders and, uh, and uh, co-stars, sorry, stars and co-stars have a uh, star quality, which is one of their special abilities. And then they have special effects that allow them to have various special rules and abilities. And on the back of the card, it explains what these all are and what they cost in game uh, currency, which in this game is called plot points. But here's the co-star for the good guys, Grizzled Veteran. And this Grizzled Veteran's name is John Frederick. So we got... Tobias Quinn and John Frederick, they're partners. They go around solving uh, issues for settlements for a steep price. In this case, they're at Tuber Town, and Tuber Town wants to get back their supplies from the Marauders, so they've supplied a unit of their own personal security guards. So what we have here is a uh, grunt leader and grunts. And a way that you can get around having more than one is to have a unit. So there's various units, there's survivors, there's bikers, there's marauders as we'll see, and then there's grunts. So these are basic cannon fodder grunt types, exactly like it says. As long as you have the grunt unit or any other, other type of unit, you can have a leader and you can have the grunts and it tells you how many you can have. So you can have four to seven grunts. We can have a grunt heavy weapon team, like a machine gun or whatever. In this case, I have just the grunt leader. So his card, um, this is what he has. It also shows you the weapons they have. So he has Brawl for his uh, melee. He's got a self-loading rifle or an SMG. In this case, all these guys are gonna have self-loading rifles. And then each grunt has the same exact thing. And he has leader, which allows him to activate himself and uh, the rest of his unit just on two plot points. So I've mentioned plot points, I'll just mention that the game runs on plot points. This is your activations, the number of activations that you have, and this is based on various things such as how many stars, co-stars, uh, how many uh, extras you have, who wins the initiative, and there's a couple other things. But like I guess I'm not going to get too deep into the weeds on the rules here as I'm still learning myself. And if I, if I were to do a teaching game, I would like to have a few more games under my belt. But anyway, these are going to be plot points. These come with it. They're just little glass beads. And you count out the number. That's how many you have. You spend them to activate. You spend them to um, start uh, special abilities. And you can even hold on to them. Uh, if you have leftovers at the end of your turn, you can bank them and save them for next time. So they're always in high demand. So if you can ever save any between turns, I've learned it's always good. But as fast as they go and you're trying to use special abilities and gear and stuff like that, uh, it's hard to keep that many in your pocket. So that is it. So good guys. So we got uh, Tobias Quinn, the Renegade Mercenary, John Frederick, the Grizzled Veteran. We also have Sergeant Parker and his four grunts from Tuber Town that are going to be helping try to uh, storm this Marauder base. So over here we have the bad guys. These are the Marauders and their Maniac Lieutenant. 
and his name is Captain Nightmare. So Captain Nightmare is the star over here, and he is the Terminal Crazy. So that's your generic uh, psycho running around the wastelands. He's got a lot of cool special rules that make him very psycho. He even has a rule called Psychotic. Assisting him, assisting him is going to be his uh, lieutenant, which is the bad lieutenant. He's the co-star. Uh, his name is Caleb Jail. And then up here we have the cannon fodder for the marauders. So again, we have a uh, unit. This is a raiding party. So raiding party consists of a marauder boss. I have six marauders. And I have a marauder pyro. But you're also allowed to bring a marauder scout and a wrecker, which I did not bring. Um, so as you can see, I'm using 40k models for the uh, marauders as I don't have all the proper models. These guys are good for stand-ins for now. They're a bit larger than the uh, other guys, but maybe they just grow them big out in the wasteland. We also have the two rad scorpions. And these guys are freaks of nature. They're actually co-stars. You could put them with your main force if you want. But uh, in this game, they're going to be running separate. As I already explained, they're going to be coming in in a random table quarter at the start of the second act. Um, and whoever's closest is going to be in big trouble. So when I say second act, the way the game is structured, there's... Uh, deck countdown deck. This is the amount of turns that you have in the game The turn the amount of cards is based on the size of the table you're playing on on a four by four I think it's six for each. So you got six act one six act two and six finale and At the start of each player's turn. They'll flip one of these over And they'll read it and it tells you exactly what happens so like in this case directorial genius all unit leader special effects you choose to use this turn to increase their range to 12 inches. So if you had a leader, normal range is 6. He could actually lead units and activate them remotely from 12 inches. Now a lot of time these are going to be either good for you, uh, bad for you, or they won't do anything. And sometimes it can be quite powerful, like knock down every single unit enemy model within a 3 inch size template and they can't activate. That's pretty big, so they can be a big deal. And they, as you get down in the deck, they get more extreme, especially when you get down into the finale uh, category. So I think that'll do it for the intro to the pilot. Like I said, I'm not gonna get too crazy into the rules. Um, when, we, when we come upon a rule, when we use a special ability from one of the stars or co-stars or extras, we'll discuss it briefly and then we'll apply it. But we're not gonna get too far into the actual nuts and bolts of the game. But I think uh, as you watch, you'll pick it up because it's actually really uh, pretty simple and uh, it's not that hard to pick up on. Andre was able to pick it up quite quickly when we did a live stream of this for the uh, Paint All the Minis Online Con uh, a couple weeks ago. So if you're a mini gamer, I don't think you would have any trouble picking up these rules. Andre's arrived, he's been briefed. He's gonna be playing the part of Captain Nightmare and the Marauders. So first thing we need to do is roll to see who gets initiative. Take your mine stat and you add the d6. So we're both at three on our mine. So I'm going to have the initiative, which gives Andre two plot points immediately. Because you're going to get the initiative. I'm winning. Do you concede? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so next thing we need to do is do uh, gear. So gear cards are like special effects that you can use or special equipment. I'll just show one here. Flare gun. So it says when you do it. Play in the model's activation, how many plot points it costs, and then what it does. So we take uh, four of these, Andre. Okay. Because you take out, uh, you get one per co star and co-star, and one if you have gear. So you're going to take four and pick two. And I'm going to take uh, six and pick three. Since, okay. Since my leader has gear, right? So, I, I think that would give him an extra one. He's a star and he has uh, gear, so I guess that means he would get two. So we'll pick our gear and be right back. So we've picked our uh, gear cards. Now what are we going to do? I'm going to generate my plot points since I'm going first. So I get uh, two for the star, one for the co-star, and a half of one for every extra rounding up. So I get one, two, three more. So I get six total plot points. Now to begin the game, I draw a countdown card. There's a couple things I forgot to mention real quick. I'll mention them. The countdown cards. After the first one's drawn by each side, you can choose to draw two to speed up the countdown. 
And if you do that, it gives two sides or both players two um, plot points. And if the card that you pick up is a finale card, you get two plot points. And one other little thing I forgot to mention is there are points in this game. They're called ratings. But they're listed on the bottom of each card. So the leaders are 10, and then the grunts can all the way, go all the way down to like two. So that's it. So I'll draw the countdown card. Directorial genius. Oh, you know what? We forgot to deploy. Let's deploy real quick. I would deploy. So I put uh, Tobias Quinn and John Frederick here. And then Sergeant Parker and his squad of grunts has uh, deployed right there. And then Andre has put all of his marauders on the hill there. And then he's put Captain Nightmare and his henchmen right there. So I pulled the directorial genius card. And that just gives me an extra six inch distance on my leader effect, which is not going to affect anything in this game or in this turn. So I'm still trying to work out a format for this game. We have the four mats down for the other games we play. The sequence in this is a little bit different, so we're going to be kind of experimenting with oh, it. Come on, Travis. You just got the directorial genius card. How, <laughs> come on. How hard can it be? You, you, you. All right, I'm going to direct. Show us what you're made of. So what I'll do first, I think, since this is an easy one to do, I'm going to just activate the grunt leader. I'm going to use his command to activate the rest of the grunts with him. And I'm just going to activate both of my star and my co-star and just do some moving since we're so far apart. All right, so uh, Sergeant Parker and his squad moved out this direction. Uh, meanwhile, Tobias Quinn ran up here. So we're saying these dunes, if you're on the looking across on the lower level, you can't see. And then Frederick has uh, run up towards this objective. And I have two plot points left. I'm just going to bank them. So it's your go, Andre. You All get... right, two for, well, I have the two because you went first. All right. Two for my leader, one for my co-star. And then how many for the uh, uh, half for each? So up. two, four, six, eight. So that's four more. Four more. So you're getting a lot more plot points than I am. Nice. Right off the bat. So flip his countdown card. And script editing. Choose one of your non vehicle models and one opposing model. Both must be of the same type. Immediately swap the positions of these two models on the table. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> Andre's moved everything up. Captain Nightmare and Kalen Jail, Caleb Jail, have uh, moved over there to that middle objective. Meanwhile, the Marauder boss and his boys are in over here. And Andre's going to bank five plot points. Woohoo! So I'll just pull my next one. So not, now I could actually pull two in a row. That'll give you two more and me two more. I don't think you need any more right now. Cutting room floor. <laughs> what was I telling you? Place the three inch blast template anywhere on the table. table. Models covered by cannot activate next turn. Their controlling player immediately gains. gains. Oh, for each model oh, effect. Jeez, like you need more. <laughs> I should put it over myself. <laughs> <laughs> You'll only hit two of them. <laughs> yeah, I spread out. <laughs> okay. And what is, you may have noticed we decided not to do that, the other one. Mostly because it would have just really hosed things up from the get go. It would have made it very difficult to play a game when we're just starting. So, anyway, okay, I'll figure out where I'm going to put this thing. So, I decided to put it over Caleb Jill and Captain Nightmare. So, they're not going to be able to activate next turn. And Andre's just got another two plot points. He's up to seven in the bank. I activated everyone. Sergeant Parker moved his boys up. He couldn't quite make it to there, so he's right next to it. Uh, Meanwhile, Tobias Quinn has run up, captured the middle objective, and John Frederick has moved up and captured this objective. So we've already got three objectives, and I'm going to bank four plot points. So it's your card, Andre. My card. Yeah, so I have four left in the bank. And blooper reel. Choose an opposing extra. This model becomes knocked down. Okay, <laughs> so these are your two main dudes. Yeah, my extras are the grunts. So, knock the leader down, okay? Oh man, that was your leader? Grunt leader, the guy with the green helmet. I yeah. thought I was doing a favor. I, <laughs> I knocked the guy that was farthest back down. <laughs> yeah, thank you. All right, some Marauder boss has just moved everyone up. This guy moved up, captured the objective. He's now in cover, and cover does uh, help you in shooting in this game. I do have a quick question. Yeah? My uh, leader won. When this leader choose one friendly model within six inches who has knocked activated, chosen model can activate this turn for free. 
Would yeah. that count if I couldn't activate, or does that I can't activate mean I can't activate? You just can't do anything. That's the way I read it. Even if I got something that says I can. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so that's it for Andre. He's going to bank like 12 plot points because he's had a hard time getting going. So now I will go. Be kind, rewind. You can move any number of your non-vehicle models up to three inches in any direction. Then your opponent can do the same. Hmm. I just moved this man to touch the objective. And then John Frederick moved just down the dune and Andre elected not to move anybody. So now no, I will activate. I moved this guy. Oh yeah, he moved the guy off of the uh, where the little sandbag. He saw what was coming at him and thought, uh, "Yeah, yeah." The uh, good guys are charging across the road towards the Marauder camp. I spent five plot points, one to activate uh, Sergeant Parker, who stood up with one of his actions. With his other actions, he commanded these guys to move. I spent one plot point on this guy by himself. Picked up the objective, moved up the hill, uh, and then uh, John Frederick advanced up behind the dune. And Tobias Quinn has moved up, ready to challenge the maniac, Captain Nightmare. Ch oh, Act 2's coming up. Uh, chase sequence. That sounds like a vehicle. Choose one vehicle model in your cast. This model can immediately move up to three inches towards any opposing star or co-star models. That yeah. was a mosquito. No models, or I mean, no vehicles in this one, so. And... Uh, Andre will be able now to generate his plot points, and like he needs anymore. <laughs> Andre's moved around. Some of the marauders have come around and manned the barricades. Uh, meanwhile, Caleb Jail and Captain Nightmare have moved around that side of the hill. Uh, so these guys ran. They moved. They have moved six, so they actually have an action left. So now we're going to do some combat. So shooting combat, but uh, well, all combat. The defender rolls first, which is different than most games. That allows the attacker to decide what he wants to do to try to buff his dice roll because there's various ways he can improve that. So the first guy, so these guys have what? Pneumatic weapons. It's a 12 inch range and a plus 5 strike value. Meanwhile, my defense is 10. So it sounds like Andre rolling a 6 would make an 11. Actually, an 11 would be a hit because a tie is a hit. Oh, sweet. So we'll okay. figure this out. So and I get, I get two shots also. Uh, no, that's only if you don't move. You have to use both oh, actions man. to do that. Okay. All right, so first shot. Okay. I'm not going to mess with it. I need to roll a one for him to have a chance. But with as many, <laughs> with many plot points as he has, there's a good chance he could roll it. a six. Okay. Okay, you, you saved yourself. Yeah, because he has 14 plot points. You get to roll 14 dice and... I can burn a few of those without a six on one of those. <laughs> worrying too much about. Uh, and I think that's it, right? Uh, yes, sir. We move on to the second act. So on a six, the scorpion comes in. Shouldn't let Andre roll this. Ah! <laughs> Damn it, you, Andre. You, you knew. Okay, so it's going to be uh, one, two, three, four. What do you want to say? Five, six, or five, six? How about we do. One, two, three. Uh, we'll just roll the dice. <laughs> Maybe it'll be a one to four. Um, <laughs> so we'll start. How about we start counting from here? So middle table edge, one through four. As long as you're keeping track. All right. One, two. Nice. So he's coming in from over there. Well, he's supposed to come in in the middle of a table quarter, Andre, not off the edge. The rat scorpion has come in. We've re recomputed. <laughs> he's, he's coming in over there. Joy. And these guys are like, you What's hear that smell? I hear something. You hear something? So anyway, uh, the rat scorpion came in. Both of his actions he moved. He's slow, so he moved eight, so he's right there. So that's going to be a big help <laughs> <laughs> to Tobias Quinn. So it's my go. I pocketed it, or I banked to let five of them. And I'm going to go now. So let's turn it over. Stuntman required. Place three inch blast template anywhere on the table. Extras under this table gain the on fire status. Oh joy. <laughs> hmm. I placed the template over here just to pretend that uh, he had an accidental ignition and he, he went up and he had an accidental discharge. <laughs> so he's on fire and as near as we can tell, you don't roll a D six to add to your defense, you just get your defense and it's minus one. Yeah. <laughs> so he's a seven. So he's real easy to hit. And he's disadvantaged and that's what it means, as far as we can tell. 
Being on fire <laughs> is a disadvantage, yeah. Yeah, it's not Well, good. he's been disadvantaged all his life. It's just now that it's oh. been officially... Uh, the wastelands know, are brutal. Categorized. I'm going to do and activate everyone. Uh, I'm going to have John Frederick fire at these guys. He's got Eagle Eye. Meanwhile, Tobias has moved up within six of these guys. And he is going to... Try one, try one. Let me rethink this. That scorpion's right there. <laughs> if you somehow get further away from it than I am, he might attack Tobias. <laughs> All right. Uh, cut. Redo. <laughs> Tobias is now over here <laughs> because I know how Andre plays. I played him enough to know that him sprinting out of there to make sure that scorpion was closer to me is something. He, that is that exactly something Andre would do. Basically what Travis <laughs> is trying to say is Tobias is scared of a bug. No, he's not. He's running over towards Captain Nightmare. Because he'd rather face Nightmare than a little bug. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, so the first thing we'll do is we'll have... Uh, so we're going to have John Frederick fire. Uh, so he's got Eagle Eye, which means gain an extra shoot strike dice if I spend a plot point. This model can choose to re-roll any shoot dice to this activation. So my weapon is a high caliber rifle. Stop. Okay. So how many? One die? One shot? Uh, yes, and I'm shooting at... Who am I shooting at there? I guess Caleb Jail, the guy in the front. Okay, shooting one at Caleb and... Ouch. So Caleb's a co-star, so he's at a 10. I'm at an 8 and I get an extra one. Okay. So this is going to cost me an extra plot point. All right. Uh, eight, eleven. So I think I beat you. Oh, yeah. So he will take a wound. Okay. So all of these characters have different levels of wounds. There's uh, three dots on the bottom. So your stars have three, ghost stars have two, and then most of the, well, grunt leader has two. But most of the extras have just one. So Caleb Jail is down one wound. And that is it for his move, his uh, action. Now I'll fire at Caleb again with Tobias. Why? But you just... Oh! Because you didn't actually move up here. I was thinking no. you moved six and you're moving another no, six so now you're trying to shoot at me? No, no I did a retake. <laughs> okay. <laughs> just go ahead and roll your defense. Oh. I'm so, on it today. Man, he's at a nine. So you're at a ten again. Uh, I will add... So another use of plot points is you can add, every time you add one, you can roll another dice. And then you add the highest number to your stat. And then any dice after that that's a 4 plus adds another 1 to that. So I will use 2. I want to see if I can kill Caleb right now. Yeah, he's dead. Caleb Jail, Bad Lieutenant. Uh, Brought oh. down by Tobias Quinn. Right now I'll do some shooting over here. So this guy... Uh, they've all moved up. He's going to shoot at him. He's got hard cover. So that's going to be... Hard cover gives him plus two to his defense. So he's goes from... Eight, so he's at, I'm at a 14. Yep. And I'm not going to waste any more of my plot points to boost. If I get lucky, I get lucky. I'm at an eight. Nope. No. Okay. So the leader will shoot next. Ooh. That's possible. No. <laughs> like that. Okay, then uh, this guy will shoot next at the same dude. There's a lot of fire behind that barrier there. Oh, I'm trying to let you... Uh, <laughs> I'm trying, Travis. Man, I'm man. trying. Okay, then uh, this guy. Okay, finally. Got one of them. So he's down. And I guess this guy will shoot... I don't know what the rule is shooting through your own guys. Never did see that in there, but I think you can. <laughs> <laughs> They're in a unit, right? So these guys... Go ahead, Andre. Last guy there behind the barrier. See if we can take him down. That won't do it. Nope. So I got one of them. And I'm thinking that as much as Not you bad. spread out and the cohesion rules are so loose on this... Uh -huh. But I wouldn't be surprised if you're not supposed to shoot through your own guys. But we'll have to... We'll find out. We'll figure it out. Morgan, there you go. <laughs> Question number one. And I think that's it for me. So, uh, here go, Andre. Pull right. a countdown card. Video game tie-in. 
Choose one D3 of your models in fight range with one or more opposing models. Each chosen model can make one immediate fight attack. This guy ran out of here. He got out of dodge. These guys all hid behind the dune here. So we're saying his eyes are up here so he can't see. This blocks line of sight. So he'll move towards the nearest model, and that's going to be this guy. Meanwhile, Captain Nightmare has charged Tobias. And he's going to use Psychotic. So it's going to cost him three plot points. One to activate, two for Psychotic, which gives him an extra attack as he moves six inches closer to the enemy. So he has a cleaver, plus eight. My defense is ten as, an, as a star. So 13. 13, and I've got an 8. Yep, but you can roll a bunch of extra dice with all those. Uh, so what do I need to get? So I'm at 8. Tie or equal. So uh, 5. 5 plus. 5 plus. And he's got 2 wounds? 3. 3 wounds? Yeah. I only have one plot point in the bank. I has got like 15. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we'll let him figure out. If he wants do to I have to roll? Dice. I mean, do I just keep rolling dice and I can keep adding them, or do I have to say how many I'm going to roll? You got to declare it at the beginning. You can't just keep rolling until you get what you want. That would <laughs> make total sense to All me. All right, Andre's going to burn eight extra plot points. That'll mean I've only got six in the bank. He really wants to to put that cleaver into Tobias. Roar. Tell you, I was expecting a mass charge of guys over this hill. <laughs> And I told Andre, look, they're coming over after us. No, wait, they're coming. They're not running to us. They're running from something. Oh, yeah, he's dead. Or not dead, but he takes a wound. So all those extra fours would have been plus one. So you've exceeded it by many, so many. So I'll put a wound on to Tobias. And let's put another wound on him. Another one? Yeah, I'm going to use my uh, um, rusty bear trap. What's that do? It, uh... One non-vehicle model. Oh no, minus one health. Okay. Yeah. So he's going to be down to one. So this could be it for Tobias. Yeah, but I don't think I want him swinging back at me either. Well, um, he can't swing back at you anyway. <laughs> Not until well, his just, turn. Yeah, well... Fire extinguisher. One non-robot model vehicle within two inches and in line of sight gains the stunned status. Okay. What does that do? Uh, he's stunned. Can't be good. Oh no, it can be absolutely good. Oh man. Uh, oh wait, hold on, follow up. After this model makes... Oh, I have to make a fight at... Oh, never mind, so I can move. Never mind. Before <laughs> I see your last one, I'm going to use my last one. I have to roll two sixes, or a six here. Your last... What are you rolling for? Aren't you going to attack again? Oh, I get two. Oh, sweet. A four. Lane. Okay, so uh, actually, I'm lucky. This model can reroll any one dice they roll per turn. Ooh. I'm gonna reroll this one. Okay. Nice. <laughs> no. Getting into the two was not easy. So okay. it might be it for Tobias. So I get three. One. Three. Or, uh, plus the one. Plus the original. Yeah. So I got the original. What is? I think he's rolling all at once. Okay. Yeah. Ooh, I don't think you got it. Close. I think I got it exactly. How? Oh, you're an 8, right? Um, I'm a 10. I got a 14. You got a 12. He lives. Tobias survives. He's heavily damaged, but he does live. So Tobias has somehow survived the cleaver attack from Captain N Nightmare. And now that is the end, so we'll move on to the next turn. Uh, let's do the scorpion. So go ahead and move him uh, towards the nearest visible model. Which way do you want him to go? Which obviously will be this guy here. Through the crack? Yeah, through the crack's fine. So... Gotta like, lure him over to Captain Nightmare or something. Like that? Yep. Here he comes. Brad Scorpion. So I was down to zero plot points, so now I gotta... Man, so two... I still have uh, so I'm still going to six. I've only got three. I only got three extras. You burned through a shitload of them right there, though. Uh, did I do my? Did I pull this video game tie-in, or was that yours? I'm sorry. Uh, that was mine. Yep. Okay. Next. 
Stock footage. Pick one countdown card from the discard pile and play it. It shows the uh, blooper reel. Choose one enemy or one opposing extra and knock him down. So I knock this guy down. He's going to become rad scorpion food. And hopefully give me a distraction while he devours that guy. And now I will go. Sergeant Parker moved up. We're going to take some shots at that thing. See if we can... It's got three wounds, so it's, it's a beast. <laughs> We're going to see if we can do some damage to it. I don't know if we can. But while he's eating that guy, we maybe might get lucky. These cowards back here are not going to come out, obviously. So, uh, John Frederick, he's moving. He's going for the supplies. Meanwhile, Tobias, uh, he has a gear card called Weighted Mesh Weight. A successful strike against an opposing extra. Oh, extra, okay. <laughs> if against a star, it is stunned. So he was stunned. From whatever Andre pulled my, on him, the my, rusty uh, bear trap. No, that was the uh, uh, fire extinguisher. Fire extinguisher. So I think to remove a status, you have to spend an action, which you did. I think that's how it goes. Uh, and he's going to throw his weighted mesh thing. But first, Andre has what's the fearsome fearsome rule? So the psychotic is fearsome. No one wants to fight him. What does it say? It says, models making a fight attack against this model must pass a spirit test or must spirit count test. their strike number as half. Round it up. All right, so spirit test. So my natural leader has a spirit of five. So there's a table here, a stat test. So on a five, a three plus, he passes. Yeah, we got it. Ah. So the weighted mesh weight is coming in. Sadly, I have no extra dice to use. So it's an 8 against your 10. So a 13. All right, here we go. 5 up. No. It's not a 5 up. But I'm lucky. Is this your reroll for the turn? This is it. Needing a 5 up. Oh, man, I saw a 6 <laughs> Spin in there, damn it. Spin. So the weighted mesh, mesh weight, this is hard to say, has missed. You uh, should have waited with a weighted mesh weight. And then over here, we're just going to fire at this guy. So he's got a defense of what, 10? Yeah. All right, so I'm going to need all the luck I can get. Hang on, so hang on. So start here. Well, so you got five, right? Yep. Here they are. So, okay, so one. So I have one chance. Actually... I can't beat those. Okay, so fives. Man. A three? That's not going to do should, it. That uh, should actually... Eleven. That's a tie. Ties go through. Yeah. So you take... Uh, should have been using my dice the whole time. You take a wound. I've wounded the rad scorpion. <laughs> We're pissed off the rad scorpion, as Andre says. And that's it. Um... I have zero plot points left. I've used my weighted mesh weight, and uh, it's your go, Andre. Let's see what you get? Reshoots. Return up to one of your used gear cards. Oh, Back no. to your gear <laughs> pool. Oh, if God. you have not used any of your gear cards this episode, gain all uh... the rusty bear trap. Hey, look! I just found a rusty bear trap laying here. <laughs> I could take down Tobias for sure. But he might buy time for Frederick to get around the edge. We'll see. Swung the bear trap. Somehow I stepped in it a third time or a second time. <laughs> so Tobias is dead. Serves him right for stepping in the same freaking bear trap. Two <laughs> Twice. <times. laughs> I'm going to move six inches this way. Rawr. And I'm going to fire my massive pistol twice. you got to use two extra plot points to do that. I do. Okay, so I will roll first. I have a defense of nine. Okay. Okay, so uh, nine versus eight. That's the first one. Okay. And I will add. Uh, actually, you... don't I get an extra die anyway? For what? For psychotic or. Okay, so th this will be your. Uh, what My is first one. Your first shot, yes. Okay, so I can uh, do two more dice for two points. Okay. okay, so three dice. 
Needing a five. Oh, he got one through. He's wounded. He got one through. And then he gets to do psychotic. Okay, so... Five. Um, I'm going to do two extra dice. Fourteen. So I got two dice plus two extra. So psychotic is an extra. Oh! <laughs> I think you just roll all of them at once. I mean... Well, but... You're adding to the psychotic roll, right? Yeah, but don't I get to add those two together? No. <laughs> what are you talking about? My uh, psychotic. The next two. No suspense. No. Oh, oh. he's down. You got him, huh? Uh, uh, I'm no. not sure. No, you needed a six because I rolled one higher. So you were at... 13, I believe. What did you roll? Like a five. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, so you needed a six. Bummer. Oh man, Woo. John Frederick still lives, but he's wounded. Captain Nightmare is tearing my ass up. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so you still got all these dudes to go. Uh, this guy's still laying there. And Marauder Boss activated his reading party. He sent those two guys back towards the supplies. These guys have moved up, they're going to fire. They are in range of this one dude. Andre, are you out of, uh, are you out of plot points finally? Did you burn through all those? No, I got two. Bending. Still got two left. But you did burn through a lot of a them. A lot. Right, so this guy here, so he's got four guys shooting uh, pneumatic weapons. <laughs> so I'm an eight. So we'll just do the first guy here. Pelted by pellet guns. Twelve. Okay. Uh, you can't even beat that. The most you can get with a pneumatic weapon is a eleven, unless you somehow roll an extra dice and get yeah. a six and a four. All right, next guy. Uh, with a six, Ten. I think you could pass. You could, you can. I'll let you roll again. What do you mean? Or oh, I can. I get a one shot at that. Yeah, oh, oh, you got him. <laughs> He's down with a pneumatic weapon, whatever that shoots. Pellet gun. <laughs> <laughs> Giant pellet gun. Pelted took, by a pellet gun. Took his head off. It's a hell of a pellet gun. <laughs> well, do you see the size <laughs> of that pellet gun? <laughs> pretty brutal looking. All right, Damn so it. he's brought down one of the grunts from Tuber Town. I believe that uh, that does me. All right, so uh, the next, it'll be next, the scorpion will activate. The only other thing was I did uh, bring two guys up defending right. the objective. So let's pull a, I gotta get something good here. Overacting, choose any star or co-star model and model gains the weakened status. Oh man, your dude is weakened. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Captain Nightmare is now weakened, which is going to reduce him to one action, which is going to slow him down. So I might be able to get away. But first thing we need to do, that spider needs to feed. I mean, the scorpion needs to feed. Oh, chomp, 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 chomp. Hey, it's not moving. <laughs> so I get to... Chomp, uh, chomp, chomp. You, you, think... roll, you roll for him. <laughs> <laughs> do I have to? <laughs> Let's see, what is this guy here? He has a strike of smash. Plus nine against your eight. <laughs> Ooh. Oh! Ah, do I spend an extra one? No. Actually, <laughs> I want him to chomp away at that guy for a little while. <laughs> you don't want him running around? That's a tie. I think I, I think I, he's he... dead. Yeah. <laughs> one time I don't want him to lie. I want him to sit here and feed a while on the uh, Marauder. Ooh. Oh, hey, look! Oh boy. <laughs> so he's dead, and now he's turned his sights. On the nearest oh boy, fresh meat. Luckily, I get to move right now. <laughs> hey guys, can we join you on the mound? <laughs> Come on. Since I lost Quinn, I'm only getting three plot points. So obviously, I activated uh, uh, Frederick, and he ran over there. He's weakened, so he can only move six. And then I'm charging up the hill. I'm coming around. Poor Bob, he's the slowest guy. He's probably going to get devoured <laughs> by the uh, scorpion next. But hey, that's what you get for being slow. Does not pay to be slow. <laughs> and that's it, yeah. Getting three plot points is, man. Yeah, I get three for my extras. That's rough. Yeah, you're still getting quite a few. Uh, so five. don't forget to draw your card. All right. I will start getting extra plot points once the uh, oh, final act starts. One, yeah, just one more. Oh, man. Location filming. Oh, boy. You can spend more than half of your plot, stru points. plot points rounded up to activate models this turn. You gain a plot point for each extra you remove from play this turn. 
Uh, so location filming, he cannot spend more than half of his. Did it say up or down on the rounding? A round up. So how okay, many so I have? get three. Okay, cool. Well, we're even there. <laughs> at least for now. Function at three. <laughs> it's yeah. not easy. With my yeah. extra one, I'm going to blast this dude. Captain Nightmare is run up or advance is one action. Actually, that's it. That's all you can do. One action. You can do psychotic once. Oh. Yeah. So if you spend two plot points, you can take one shot. Oh wow. So Andre has to either take the status off and move, or he can. Actually, you can take the status off, move, and you can use Psychotic and take one shot. So He's going to shoot at Sergeant Parker. So Sergeant Parker's defense is a uh, 8. Ooh. Ooh. So you don't have a lot left to play Ooh. with. You want to add a dice. Um, well, I get one for Psychotic. Right, so you can roll two. Um, and I'm at an 8 also. Yep. So yep. Oh, a six. man, you're being harsh. Six. <laughs> Four and a two. Uh, so under your, okay. under your uh, improvised rules, that would have been a hit. Yeah. Well. Um, okay, so Andre's got uh, two left. Uh, so he can still activate. Well, he can activate them individually unless he moves the Marauder boss over. I'm actually... Do I really want to move those two now or... So you just got to be touching it by the end of the game, which you're in prime position to do, obviously. Yeah, I'm actually going to save my two for now. All right, so everyone's just going to stay put. Yeah. And on to the next turn. So the end of Act 2. Pirate copy. Pass a mind statistic with any star or co-star. If the test exceeds you, they may randomly draw a card from the gear discard pile. Oh, boy. Okay. Uh... uh Okay, keep in mind, uh, I think we have to move the scorpion here too, don't we? Yeah, we will right after this. Okay. That's probably not a pass, so whatever. <laughs> Mind is three, I think you need like a five. So. Okay, so, so scorpion. scorpion, he's gonna... Where'd everybody... Oh, there's some dudes over there. Hey, wait. Oh, this guy's close. <laughs> okay, he's gonna attack that soldier. So I'll roll my defense. Okay, eight, nice. nine, ten, thirteen, and your attack is nine. Nine. So he doesn't kill him. Nope. Actually, no, you're hitting him from behind. That does something. Getting hit from behind means you're disadvantaged, which means you don't get to add any extra dice to your defense. So I'm going to go ahead and continue on. I get three plot points again, which is pretty lame. So John Frederick. Where'd he go? I had the zip line gear card. Uh, so he was able to run up and shoot a, um, I don't know, some kind of device into the building. It has to be two levels higher, but he shot the zip line up, and he pulled himself up, and he's now hiding behind the building. Sadly, that took all of my activations. So these guys are just going to be sitting ducks. <laughs> yeah. Where did everybody go? But maybe a few of them will live to get over here and help out uh, John Frederick. And that's it for me. Andre will now pull his finale card. My first one, it's two plot points, and it, it is press play and record. <laughs> oh boy. Actually, that was a thing on VCRs. Yeah, back in the day. What did that do? That recorded. You had to push both at the same oh, time. Oh, okay. All righty. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, just, uh, yeah, ask us if you don't know what a VCR is. Um, <laughs> choose up to three of your non-vehicle models. Each chosen model can make one fight or shoot attack. The targets of these attacks count as disadvantaged. Hmm. Well, Captain Nightmare can take a shot again at Sergeant Parker. They're probably too far. They can't see anything. Uh, uh, you got a shot. I, don't I got you, one guy shooting. You can't possibly hurt it, though. Yeah. <laughs> Those things are impervious to pneumatic weapons. <laughs> Pretty much. Are you really shooting a pellet gun at me? <laughs> All right, so Sar Captain Nightmare is going to fire at Sergeant Parker. So I'll roll my dice. This is a free shot, right? Yep. So disadvantage, so I can't roll another dice. Oh, man. Oh, you're just pulling out the <sighs> sixes. Getting lucky, Sergeant Parker. Um, I can't uh, do it without doing more than one die, can I? You would have to add a die. But you got a lot of, I mean, damn, man. Uh, Two, four, six, seven, and you got nine? Think... You got nine. Huh. 
But is it worth it? I mean, how many are you going to have to add to get a six? Uh, you got to get a six. Because we're both at an eight. So I'd have to get a five and a four. Or a six. Or a six. So. I'll take his chances. The high caliber pistol. Oh, oh no! Boom! Sergeant Parker is down. <laughs> Do right not his primitive body estimate. armor. <laughs> Sarge, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> gurgle, gurgle, croak. So Andre used, uh, well first he just removed the weakened status from Captain Nightmare. So that was his action, that's all he can do. Nightmare already took out a Sarge, I mean. And Tobias. Nightmare's well, doing I his... meant this turn. Oh. <laughs> he also wounded your coast yeah, arm. Yeah, that, that's hey. true. He's doing some damage. So the Marauder uh, boss had these guys move up. One can see him, or in range of him. The rest are going to shoot at this guy, and then they're going to let the scorpion and work the on him. And the and his buddy moved up by yeah. the... Uh... They heard the noise over here. It was a loud metallic <laughs> clang. Clank! Hey, so let's go check out that noise. So you're rolling. All right, so first shot against... I guess we'll start with the guy up here in the front. Okay. So eight against five. Okay, I don't think you can beat uh, that. All righty, let's do the other three. Okay. <laughs> can I just roll them all at once? I'll do one at a yeah. time. Yeah, well... So a two, okay. So that's a ten, you need a five plus. Ah, oh, he's down. Another man down. So at some point I have to roll an axe test, and that might be now. Axe test is uh, kind of like a morale check for your whole army. Once you lose a certain amount of models, you have to do a, a check. So I'll check and see what that is. So axe test. I have to see if my cast gets axed. I should, probably should do this earlier. When you lose half, was that? It was half, right? Yeah. When you lose half your models. More models removed. down than right. up. And I do. So I roll a spirit check, and my only guy left is uh, Frederick. He's a grizzled veteran with a spirit of three, so I need a five plus to pass the spirit check. Oh, oh I saw it. So All I right. failed the spirit check. So in the rules, it says remove 1d6 models, but we're just going to do what my friend Morgan suggested and just remove one model. <laughs> I will leave him to his yeah well he's just gonna get eaten <laughs> so it don't matter he had a heart attack while the scorpion was uh, so the scorpion him. finally killed that guy so I've been axed okay and do you have anything left I think you're done shooting I guess you could shoot at the you might want to start shooting at that guy now uh, clear him out of your camp of course you can't do anything so never I, I was gonna say uh <laughs> It think, seems to me it just pisses him off when you shoot at him. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe just sit real quiet, he'll go away. So, Scorpion's turn? Uh, yep, so we'll move on to the next turn. So I will count down card. Cut. You can choose to immediately gain up to four plot points. The opposing side gains the same amount. <laughs> I, uh, do I even need four? I got, what, one get, guy left? You get two. You got your co-star and one extra. But the co-star, where the extra is going to be toast right yep. now. But, I mean, you've got two, so how many do you need? Uh, All you've got is your co-star. And I don't have any. But I would need some to use some of my uh, co-star stuff. <sighs> how many do you have? Uh, Four. Yeah, I'll do it. I'll take four extras. Actually, no, I get two for pulling the card. So never mind. That should be enough for me to activate my one guy, three. <laughs> so you get two every time you pull a card in the finale? Yeah, every finale card you get two. Oh. All right, so the scorpion's going to attack, so I'm disadvantaged. That last soldier's getting taken down behind, from behind by the scorpion. You can do it, Travis. We can. Come on, six. Four. Twelve. Just don't, don't roll a one. Okay, Dude. scorpion ate him. Rom, rom, rom. Scorpion's chomping through. Hmm. Maybe I'll just sit here and let him eat Captain uh, Mid or Nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> All I can do is assault. Um, John Frederick is going to run out and assault the Flamer. Because he's got a special rule. Of if you, uh, He's got the blocking special rule. Yeah. So, so I can't... if he gets within one inch of me, he has to get into base contact. Yep, so it's a good way to keep someone off an objective like that. Okay, uh, well I get one attack. Uh, I got a combat knife. 
an 8 plus against your 8 plus. Ooh. And I've used all, actually, hold on here. I actually only used one plot point to do that. I'm going to use the other two to add. So I'm going to add two extra dice to my roll of 8. So go ahead. Well, I guess I have to wait to see what you do. <laughs> Getting ahead of myself here. Okay, so I can roll extra dice. You can. Even if you charged? Oh no, you're disadvantaged if you if I charge. That's what I was thinking. So I can't add. Where does that only count for a charge in the first range band? Because you get a free attack if you get if you make, can make it to your target in the first range band. Hmm. Both are charges. All right, we'll say you're disadvantaged. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> it is a charge, it's just not. It you is. don't get a free attack. And you're charging downhill. Right downhill, man. All right, and. <laughs> so a nine so you, there's no point in even lose. using my extra you can't lose so flamer is dead oh man john frederick is near the objective and we're nearing the bottom or we're nearing the finale <laughs> and it'll be andre's go countdown card and just three left four left four left Camo appearance. Camo. <laughs> Cameo appearance. <laughs> Choose one of your extra models. That model can make an immediate move action. If this move ends that model in base contact with a star or co-star models, you immediately gain uh, two, two plot points. Excludes driver and passenger. So, well, over here, you could contact John Frederick with that Marauder. If you get up. If you want. He's a co-star. He shouldn't be laying down. So I can do that. So for just, two plot points. Uh, no, you gain two plot points if you do that. And then I'd get an attack on him. Uh, yeah, I guess you would. Free attack. This will be your thing, I guess. Sweet. All right, so you're going to attack Frederick with the Marauder. Mm -hmm. What kind of weapon does the Marauder have? Hand weapon. The Marauder has, um, would you believe it's called a hand weapon? Hand weapon. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. The strike value of six. Okay, six. All right, six against my nine. Yeah, good luck with that. Swing and a miss. All righty. So a quick update here. Andre has a decision to make. He's going to go after one of these two groups, but he's got to get up there because Frederick will probably be able to take that Marauder out. Taking one for the team. So he's going to move up and serve up lunch. Oh, just one guy, okay. Yeah, good luck convincing someone to do that. He served this guy up. He said, go distract the Scorpion. we got to go protect the supplies. Meanwhile, Captain Nightmare ran around. With a name like Captain Nightmare, you can actually uh, get people <laughs> to obey commands like that. Go feed yourself to the Scorpion. And then these guys are going to come up, and they're just going to fire. They don't care if their own guy's there. They're going to unload. So it's going to be a risky shot. It's good to be evil. Which means you're disadvantaged. And if you miss, you're going to hit your own guy. But actually, it says you'll pick a model... I think with touching and but since there's only two guys, you'll do that. <laughs> okay, so uh, defense of nine. Okay. Ooh. Thirteen. Yeah. You can't even oh. beat that with a five. Oh, <laughs> these pneumatic five. weapons are crap. Okay. You're better off. We were better off with the. What so I hit my. Just, so I hit my dude. So roll defense for my dude. Yeah, you do hit. No, it's just a. Uh, I think it just dies. So I rolled and missed, right? Yep. Which means I hit my other guy, right? Or I have to roll up to see if I hit my other dude? Or I just automatically... You're the target him. of a successful strike. You So you miss, so the other guy is the target, so he's dead. Okay. So Sweet. now you can still now you hey, can just shoot at me. It's open! <laughs> <laughs> the target's opened up, boys! Clear Unload! Line of, clear line of fire, so the next guy in line will defend... 12. Well, you can't even beat, can't that. beat that. You can add. You can add um, dice. Roll We're, one more. Let's okay. see if we can get a better shot. No. Or not. Okay. I can so do that. they miss. So you had your chance. And that's it. So get ready to move the scorpion. So let me uh, get... Uh, let's organize our plot actually, points. Actually, that only cost me three. I'm still building plot points. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so next, next card. So the scorpion will attack the marauder, obviously. 
Creature Workshop. Each of your models with one or more unexplained special effects can use one immediately. I don't think I have unexplained special effects. He's just a regular guy. Okay, well that was a... Drive-by. Didn't do anything. Okay, so I have... Uh, uh, I get two plot points for the finale here. card. Oh, that's just you. <laughs> yeah, I'm by myself here. <laughs> I'm the last man standing. And then he's going to get uh, one for himself. So I'm up to five. Five? That is so good. To activate the John Frederick. He's moved behind the objective. We're going to try to take out the Marauder boss. I'm going to use an extra plot point to use my Eagle Eye special effect. Okay, so... And I get to roll an extra dice and re-roll one of these. So I'm adding eight. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Okay, we'll stick with that. <laughs> uh, uh, so I at choked. ten, I still got it. And I could have still re-rolled. So. Okay, always roll defense first. <laughs> always. So the Marauder boss is down. So you have to take an axe to test. Okay. I'm sure you do. So what's your uh, spirit on... Well, I've got some awesome spirit. On your Five. Leader. Five, okay. That's probably like a three yet. Yeah, you got it. So you pass, you're not axed. Rawr. Oh, we forgot to do the scorpion. That should happen before I went. Okay. So we'll uh, go ahead and roll the defense for him. Four. Twelve. Uh, what's my attack? So nine for the uh, scorpion. Yeah. <laughs> you're down, boy. Munch. Man, he's just, he's going to be full tonight. <laughs> Hey, look who's right next to him, Captain Nightmare. Yep. So everything's going to wind up in this little area. And uh, so that's all I can do. I just have the one guy left. So does the down the Marauder Scorpion boss. have two uh, activations? He does. So would he move up and... Actually... Well, he had to move up. Actually, that was a free no. attack. Because he was within his first range band. So yeah, he moved up. Got a free attack. But then we should have been doing that on your guys too. Yeah. <laughs> Next time. That was a screw up. We screwed that up. Okay. Okay. So technically, I guess you could theoretically just move down a line like old 40k days with the corn berserkers and just go from group to group. Well, except it's not, I mean, it's only two dudes. It's not an infinite chain. It's just, you've got, if you start in contact with oh, two. one. Yeah, that's right. Because you're limited by your actions. Yeah. Okay. So it's your go, Andre. Okay. I need to, uh, so we got uh, three cards left. Okay. And last chance to impress. That you can sure. use star qualities this turn without paying any activation. Which isn't that big a deal since you have so many, but and uh, so few guys to activate. But whatever, it'll save you a few. First thing we'll do, Captain Nightmare is going to advance, and we're going to be within twelve. He's going to fire his high caliber pistol at John Frederick. We're going to call that those crates hard cover. So I'm a 9 plus 2, so an 11 for the first one. And I still have 3. Uh, do I want to... I need to save... I want to get 2 for pulling the countdown card. Plus 1, so I'll have 3 again. Yeah, I'm going to add one, one, 1 die to this roll. Okay. So I'm at 11. So 15. 15. You're at an eight. All right, he's going to not waste anything. He can't match it. He's not going to burn any um, plot points. So the next one, I'm going to spend another one. You can't. Why? Because it's an extra attack. What do you mean? Right, an I'm going to add another one. So I'm down to one extra. So 11 again. Same, Same thing. thing. Same exact roll. Uh, well, i got to get this. So you so... need a six and a four. If you can get a six and a four, you can take down my co-star. Is he gonna burn all of his plot points to try to do it? So I got uh how many extra do I have? Dots. Alright. He's gonna burn a bunch of extra plot points. Oh he's a six so and a four on two of these dice. Eight dice. Should be no problem. No! <laughs> no six. Um John Frederick. He's making a name for himself. He didn't pull it off. He needed a six and at least one four. Okay, last two and... So the last two guys are gonna shoot? No. Nope, okay. Captain Nightmare sent another man to his doom. Go distract the uh, Brad Scorpion, we need to kill this guy. 
Meanwhile, the last Marauder, well, he will be the last Marauder <laughs> one way or another. He's charging John Frederick. Captain Doom is going to be the last Marauder. So since he was within moment. the first move, uh, first action distance, he gets a free attack. Okay. So I'm going to nine since cover doesn't count for uh, close combat. Can't deal can't with beat that. that. And then the uh, next one. Yep. Uh, Eleven. Oh, you needed a six. With a six, you could have brought him down, I think. Uh, or no. No, you're at a, a seven. Five. Oh, a five. I missed it by one. You're at a plus ten. six? Yeah, oh, ten man. on your eleven. Ah, you are sweating it. John Frederick. <laughs> so close. All right. Okay. There I go. I'm going to burn the last two, because I can turn two at a time. So this is it. This okay. is going to be the last one. So straight to video. This episode ends at the end of this turn. Okay, well it's going to end at the end of the turn anyway. Yep. So is it just the, is it both cards or just the one? No, you just flip, you go straight to the back one. You okay. Don't get, you don't read both. All right. So, so I'm going to get to the, uh, <laughs> it's, it's the end of the game. Yep. And I'm going to get three of them. And I'm going to use, well, obviously I'm going to activate uh, John Frederick. And I'm going to attack that Marauder. And we'll see if I can survive the charge of Captain Nightmare. So I do have three left over, or two left over now. I'm going to use one extra dice. He doesn't really have... Why don't you let me roll my defense and then you decide? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Sorry, it's still new to me. Here we go. The defense thing is still new to me. Oh! Oh, man. Are you going to try and beat that? I have no choice. No choice? So I will spend an extra dice. Actually, this so this guy's a little bit different. He has military training. So, so instead of to... adding a dice, I add a plus one to what I roll. So you need a 14. Yeah. So you're a brawl of eight. Combat knife. Yeah. Or combat knight eight. So, I need a so six. you need a six. I need a six. Right, and you're just doing one die, or did you burn to give yourself a plus one? If I roll a well, actually, I need a five, because if I burn one, yep. I'm going to burn one for military training. Okay. Which allows me to add plus one to this roll instead of so an extra dice. you just dice. need a five. Need a five. No pressure. I can do this. Oh, uh, it's on the bottom. No. Huh. And that's it. That's all I can do, so it's your go. Mine. Actually, we never did the uh, scorpion again. Well. He's just going to charge that guy. Rawr. <laughs> down. Scorpion's rampaging through the Marauder base, man. And the Scorpion wins the game! <laughs> this is going to come down to victory points. And since you've killed my star, I'm afraid that... Uh, that might swing it. It might, it might. So Andre's go. Sorry, Andre does not get to go. That ends the turn. That ends the game. So the way it stands now, uh, I have one guy left. Right there, John Frederick, the grizzled veteran. Andre has the Terminal Crazy and one Marauder. And we have the Rad Scorpion running amok as well. And nobody gets points for the main yeah. objective. We'll say that we cancel each other out on that. So we'll go ahead and rack, uh, we'll count up the victory points. We're back to wrap it up at the end of the episode. The pilot is complete. And it's a tie. We both have uh, <laughs> four victory points. So we both had one for... Uh, well, Andre got one because my cast was axed. Uh, he got... Two for his objectives, I got three. We both got one for killing a star or co-star. Uh, Captain Nightmare killed Tobias Quinn. And we gunned down uh, Caleb Jail as well. Well, and Captain Nightmare is taking it as a moral victory. He took out your star and yeah. he was just a badass marauder. Oh, he was tearing it up. Yeah, and since no one has, no one killed the uh, scorpion, that would have been a victory point. <laughs> and since we are both in contact with the um, objective, well, it cancels out. So yeah, we both got four. One thing we forgot to do, uh, once, once per game, Andre, or the second person who doesn't get the objective, can steal the scene, which we did not do, which would have been a good time to do it at the end here. But that just means that the, like, Andre could have gone twice in a row, once per game. Which would have been a good idea. Right there. Right at Should the very end. One other thing that we discussed off camera at the beginning of the game was that this objective was only worth two points to me and three points to Travis. Right. 
which if we're both claiming it and we <laughs> distribute the points that way, Travis would come out one up. That's true. We could do it that way. I mean, it doesn't really matter, but it's a way. But normally when we play games, if two people are touching, touching it, it just no one you has don't it. get it. Yeah, that's kind of the normal mini gaming a way of doing things when pretty it comes much to the objectives. standard yeah that doesn't mean we couldn't change it for this game another time just really depends on what the objective is something like that you'd have to be there alone to claim it well it's kind of bizarre to have the game end and two people touching the objective <laughs> uh, not be you know on it's... the next episode <laughs> <laughs> we'll see what happens next on whatever the name of this tv show is <laughs> you stop touching the box no you stop touching it it's like one of those contests where you gotta touch the car <laughs> whoever is the last one touching it gets to win the car yeah <laughs> i could be here all night <laughs> so yeah it's a fun game i like it it's uh i mean we're just really scratching the surface on the uh the way it can be played and the different genres you can throw in and I mean, there's just a lot of depth to it. It's simple, nice mechanics. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I didn't feel like we were making a ton of mistakes. That we know of. I don't think we made a lot. I'm sure we made some, but... Yeah, I'm. well, we all, you always do uh, we make when some. you're learning something like we are. We still make mistakes in games we played a hundred times. Well... <laughs> <laughs> Is it going to be no different? And we'll hear about it, because that's just the nature of things, but it's fine. I, I know we welcome those kind of comments, because well, it helps us learn how to play Well, and actually, uh, early on, it's good to hear about the mistakes, just because, you know, we're here to improve, too. Yep. So, if you know the rules and uh, are familiar with what uh, wasn't supposed to happen that we uh, <laughs> didn't uh, get on the cutting floor... Uh, <laughs> So in the end, Captain Nightmare and John Frederick had made a name for themselves. Uh, Tobias uh, Quinn, he's done. So is Caleb Jail. And the Captain, dustpan of history. Captain Nightmare. Is he's good. Terminal Crazy is really good. The man. Yeah. No, that was uh, that was impressive. I, I, you know, I threw the star and the co-star out there together, and the co-star went down fast. And I didn't think by himself he would be able to do what he did. Well, that bear trap. <laughs> Plus, you got to use the, the bear trap. The first one or the second one. one? Oh, it was the same one. So as you're charging into Tobias, he threw out two bear traps. Tobias is dancing around. He stepped in both of them. So taken down by bear traps. That's interesting. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and sign off now. So it's a good game. Let us know what you guys think. Um, I like it. Andre likes it. It's simple and... Uh, fun, but pretty deep with the uh, variety of different things you can do, all the command or uh, powers and everything. It's just a lot of fun. It's really the first card-based game we've ever done here on the channel. Yeah, and it's you know obviously uh, getting a scenario and a storyline behind it would just make it that much better. Um, oh yeah, it makes everything better. Who knows? Maybe we'll see Captain Nightmare again. I'm. I can guarantee it. <laughs> that was uh, that you was a kick in the ass uh, going around uh, moving six inches towards something and getting an extra shot was well. He makes cool. uh, plus he's got a rule you never even use, which was that hide or whatever it is. Or oh can't yeah, be shot at if he's well. You never tall. shot at him from distance. Yeah, probably because I knew about that rule. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. I probably would have forgotten. All right. Well, that's it for this one, so uh, glad you guys watched. Let us know what you think. Uh, as usual, check out our Patreon page for a behind-the-scenes look of what we're doing here. If you're in a Chain of Command, we're doing a Chain of Command campaign there as well for patrons. We also have a Facebook group if you want to um, be part of what we're doing and show us your hobby progress, whatnot. And with that, we're going to go ahead and uh, say goodbye. Any uh, last words, Andre? Oh, uh, Terminal Crazy is pretty, uh, pretty awesome. And... That is. So we'll see you guys next time.